right, everybody, welcome in to another episode of the DNVR Rapids podcast. We are live, live, can you believe that? Live from the DNVR studios for the first time in a long time. And we are presented, of course, by the homies at Ivaca TV. Um, I'm joined, as always, by the superest of super co-hosts, not producing today. Burr, 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 burr. We got super producer, yeah, yeah. How are we doing today? I'm not the main attraction, but I always You're not, so we're done talking about yeah. you. Uh, right here to my right, uh, you know him as the reigning Rapids Defender of the Year, the man with a howitzer for a right leg, <laughs> Keegan Rosenberry. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Happy to uh, be in the studio. This place is uh, really cool to see. Very exciting. Awesome. Thanks, man. We're, uh, we're really happy to have you, obviously. And, um, you know, we're going to dig into to the season, maybe talk a little bit about you winning Defender of the Year, some of the, you know, just how you're feeling about uh, your performances this season. We'll mm-hmm. dig into some of the goals, but, you know, the two absolute rockets that happened this <laughs> season. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, the the fans will come through with some questions and comments through uh, on the YouTube chat. So um, definitely, if you're listening, get those in and we'll, we'll hit those as they come up. Um, I mean, first off, uh, let's talk about the award. We were just at it in Burgundy Affair. We saw you there. And um, you won uh, Rapids Defender of the Year. Is that your first award there? That is my first award. Um, yeah, super. Uh, you know, grateful. Obviously, um, you know, if I if I did need to say anything for that award, I had a little something just thought up. And <laughs> and uh, uh, personal accolades are awesome, but you know, awards that are voted on by either players and or coaching staff that see you every single day and you know in training and in every single drill, I think means a lot to me, you know, personally, just because of that, you know, self-accountability, holding a high standard and, um, you know, super, you know, like I said, grateful towards the, the staff for the award and, um, you know, wish it could have been on the, on the back of a better year as always, but uh, I'm sure we'll get into that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, but it did, you did come off a uh, nice win, probably one of the more complete wins. The interesting thing to me about that game was you were playing the pivot on a three man back line. We're talking yeah. right back, Keegan Rosemary playing playing pivot. How was is that weird for you to do it? A huge talking point for us. Yeah, we just hadn't <laughs> seen it from you yet. Which we were super intrigued. Yeah, I uh, I think part of the video after the award, um, you know, at at the Burgundy Affair was was mentioning my versatility, and you know, again, I'm just uh, I'm grateful to be selected for you know, almost every game and be put into the lineup and be trusted by the staff and by my teammates that, you know, I can still do a job in a different position. And, um, you know, as you said about kind of one of our better performances, that, that FC Dallas game was, um, you know, I, I felt like the best that I handled a, a, a true center back role before. I played in their very limited minutes a, a, at other times, mm-hmm. but um, it's difficult. It's, uh, you know, there's so many different nuances to, to each position that are, that are um, I feel like, best mastered when you play there all the time but but you know i like to think that i can i you know like i said i did my best and um it wasn't easy was they put you there for a reason well we're gonna say like <laughs> frazier doesn't that. just do it to do things like I there's a reason that. you're playing center back thank you yeah and i've asked i've asked some of the defenders on the team i think i've even asked you this but having a coach like frazier who was an mls defender of the year and he's like okay hey i'm putting you in the middle of this back line here like that has to have some sort of confidence right to know that he's behind that 100%. Uh, and, and I think all defenders kind of appreciate his input, um, you know, just a little more so because, you know, that you're always going to maybe hear, hear a guy that's played the position and played that side of the ball a little bit differently and, and take it home or, um, you know, let it hit a little bit more. But, um, yeah, it's certainly a vote of confidence. And, and um, you know, from the top, that's uh, certainly appreciated. You know, some players score headers. Some players get some tap in. Some people clean up, you know, off of a goalie or off a corner <laughs> or a set piece. But not you. You, it's only bangers from 22 plus yards out. What's, I mean, it's like, it's, it's like the annual, we were talking about it before the season. We're like, yeah. all right, when's Keegan's annual rocket coming in? And you got two this year. That um, absolutely <laughs> made me lose my mind. By the way, I woke up like three of my neighbors. I think I got complaints that I just didn't hear about. <laughs> that goal had me going insane. I was on a Twitter rant for like three hours. Like, they should, I'm everybody should go watch that <laughs> goal like four or five times. I could not stop rewatching it, dude. Right. I was falling asleep midnight and I was still watching that goal. <laughs> How'd it feel? I was gonna say, if I'm being honest, I watched the clip uh, a few times myself. <laughs> so don't, feel, so don't, don't feel too bad about Just it. Just so everybody knows, me and Keegan have one thing in common: we like watching the goal. <laughs> um, no, I felt great. You know, similar to the uh, to the Red Bull goal, um, it, it was in a in a winning effort, and I think you know that's that's what it comes down to. You know, mm-hmm. I, of course, you know, a guy like me, I don't find myself in goal scoring opportunities too too much, but. Um, 
you know, to be able to, to contribute to the win in that way, you know, I feel like guys are doing it in, in, in different ways every time, but, you know, to have a hand in it like that and to score the way that I did is, um, you know, that's kind of why, the, why you play the game. You know, those celebrations, those moment, moments with teammates, moments in the home stadium are, um, you know, so valuable and, and, and so cool to be a part of. Keegan reminds me a lot of the most interesting man in the world at Commercial <laughs> Dos Equis, where it's like, I don't always score goals, but when I do, they're, they're, ra- they're rockets. <laughs> they're goal like of the year. Their, like Bangers. <laughs> Um, let's see. What's this one that just popped up in football? In my opinion, this year, Manchester city won the champions league. The, the, oh, that's all they want to talk about. Yeah. Okay. They want to talk football. Well, yeah. Early we're here on. to talk Keegan. Sure. Not we're here football, talking, guys. It's not a bad, but not a bad take, man. You're right. Yeah. Colin is a, a, a football robot. Um, have you been able to watch any of those? I don't know Goals what's going had? on. I mean, <laughs> he's so, like Terminator so sent back from time to defender, destroy. How do you stop Holland? Ooh, that's like, actually a great yeah, question. Like, how do you, how would you stop? Holland? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk from a position of. <laughs> like you should trust me any more on this answer. <laughs> trust me any, any more on this answer than any other analyst out there or, or player. But I mean, it's clear that he can score in so many different ways, and it, it's been really interesting to see the transition to a different league and, and all the people and all the, all the things I had to say. Some people, to be fair, probably deserve credit. Said that he would slide right in and and the transition would be easy. And there were others that said it might take some time. And I mean, I think the biggest thing is like City were such a good team before him. Yeah, and, yeah and for sure. Some people said they were going to that he was going to make them better but it's like you know there's such a good system and 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 team behind him that um yeah you have the not, best not, striker not, in the world and you have the best midfielder in the world not, him. Yeah. not to say that he's not <laughs> earning his goals but i mean he's yeah. going to get really good chances yes. every game being a part of that team and i think you know we've seen that uh not, i mean to kind of jump back to where we were with the dallas game i mean Ferreira's is going to be playing in the world cup right like possibly starting for a world cup team and you were one-on-one with him several mm-hmm. times in that mm-hmm. game and i think some pretty good stops um you know what's the is it just kind of go in and and you kind of just bank on being a, a good defender or is there like special game planning specifically to him or is it you know how do you approach someone of that skill level yeah um he's a, he's a guy that you would probably refer to as like a false nine a guy that really loves mm-hmm. loves to come off the line as the the highest position on the field and come back and find the ball, find the game and, and make the game uh, ideally for him and ideally for that team. And um, it's, it's sometimes a difficult assignment. There's a lot of um, decision-making involved in being that center guy in a back five, or if you were in a back four, kind of the center back pairs or, or pairing. And um, you know, his timing of checking off the line when, when a buildup is kind of coming towards an entry past time and my ability to read that, and try to either be there quick enough for him not to turn and, and make a play, or or do I just leave it and, and say, you know, I, I need to stay in the line here, and, sure. and it's it's actually better if he just gets it there, you know, 80 yards away from our goal as opposed to maybe, you know, turning and I'm beat. Right. So, um, like I said, nuances of the position that are difficult and so much different as you go across the back line. Right, and then, oh, yeah, by the way, in this new position, you're going up against World Cup striker. No <laughs> yeah. no big deal. You got it, Keegan. Good. Yeah. We'll leave that off yeah. to you. That is what I call trust immediately. Yeah. Like, um, that is yeah. absolutely trust from, from Coach Frazier there. Um, yeah, Frazier's had a lot. Of, you guys have played five back, three back, four back. Is there any one of those in particular you're most comfortable in? Is I mean, I assume it would be the four back left back, but I mean, I could be wrong on that, obviously. Um, or right back, sorry. It's it's hard to say. I, I feel like, like I said, you know, I've been put in positions to do you know a lot of different things. That it's almost I, I like to think that I'm kind of just rounding out my game even more at different spots to be able to be comfortable in every single one. I, I would have said you know right back in a four probably up until. You know, I start. I, I was under Robin and, and his um, formation and tactics and stuff. And and even in a four now, if we have an attacking left back, I kind of like to slide in and, and build out of a three anyway, and almost come into a center back spot. Yeah. So it's interesting how it's kind of changed my perspective of a of a right back and a four and and different things that 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 position can do. You know, we talked about City just now, like the way that Kyle Walker kind of comes in and he's a right back and a four yeah. a lot of times, but he's sliding in and it makes. It makes the build out and, and the angles of, of ways to find forward passes and into midfielders, I think, a lot better. And I think that's why Robin likes it as well. Yeah, and then you see Lucas definitely up that left side. Yeah. He'll almost be up in the box sometimes, and you kind of have to stay back, mm-hmm. right? Do you two, what's the communication with you two in terms of who's going, who's staying? Is it kind of just the flow of the game? Is it more of a game plan to push him up and kind of have you stay home? Um, yeah, it depends. You know, there's, there's so many variables, but I think in general, when we go into a game, you know, we and and the team in general kind of like Lucas's qualities going forward 
and at the same time prefer some of my qualities in the back to, to help us build out. Um, you know, whether that's passing or, or longer balls across the field or, or just ways to get guys going forward and, and, um, and kind of beating that first line of pressure. Uh, so that combination of things, I think, makes a lot of sense. And, um, and we've had uh, success with it, I feel like. And with that, like, again, you say, like, there's, it, you start with the formation, but you change into a three back, sometimes mm-hmm. you change into a five back, sure. depending on the game. I'm guessing there has to be a lot of communication between you and the center backs, especially. What kind of relationship do you have, like, Danny Wilson, Lala, Scuff, like, is there a language barrier? Because I know that, like, thick accent, that European accent could be... Honestly, yeah, friend. you probably have the biggest language barrier with Danny, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, even Lala sometimes, screaming in the middle of the match yeah. can be hard. It goes, like, he's learning English, he's getting there little by little. Yeah, no, there's a lot of different uh, different flavor on the back line there. For, for sure. sure. But, um, no, I, I think I, I do think Scottish people get a little bit of, um, you know... A bad rap. Stick for, for their accents <laughs> yeah. and how thick they can be and how and how um, hard it is to understand them. But I've spent a lot of time with Sam and Danny, and and uh, I've come to be able to translate, you know, just fine. But, um, I would say the hardest one is Gus, just because uh, you know he's primarily Spanish. With uh, I think he's understanding more English now. But um, you know, I've played with enough Latino players at this point to be able to get the basics down. And sure. and. Um, and at times, even some basics in the locker room banter. But it's not me, you know, throwing it out there. It's more trying to pick up bits and pieces. Like, uh, you know, if somebody's making fun of Mikey at this sure. point or something like that. But, uh, no, it's... Oh, shots at Mikey. It, <laughs> uh, uh, of all the players, Mikey deserves, Mikey, Mikey deserves all of the shots. He is always picking on somebody. He's, he's the It's always the, the smallest jokester. guy, right? Yeah. Trying to make yeah. himself look a That's little bigger. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we got a really important question from Judgmental Jim here. As a fellow Pennsylvanian, I need to know what's your favorite Denver cheesesteak spot. Denver cheesesteak? Oh, I can't even. Do you not uh, even mess with cheesesteaks out here? No, no, it's not that. I, I mean, was I actually, wouldn't mess with tacos out here, man. If I'm Mexican, <laughs> I, <would. laughs> I, was, I was just telling somebody, like, you know, I've had a good cheesesteak in Philadelphia. But, sure. but at the same time, it's it's a relatively, like, easy food item sure. to, to master. Sure. Or maybe not to master, but to make. Right. And, you know, I would say, yeah, that's the place to have one. But a lot of places can, can make a good cheesesteak. Yeah. I, I can't say that one comes to mind here. I've had sure. one here, but I can't, like, remember off the top of my head it being kind of a, right. an item. I, I Everyone loves I Ted's. Remember. Ted's is kind of the, the, the institution okay. here. Okay. For me, I just, like, I mean, I like Taste of Philly. I like the Green Chili Philly. That's, so, my, that's my jam. So you're from Philly. Yeah. Very important question. We know you're a basketball guy. Yeah. Oh, no. Jokic or Embiid? Oh! Again, don't, don't feel pressure to no, answer. Play, no wait, pressure. Wait. Can I get some clarification to the question? Just like, how how Preference. am I how am I to to what? To how to they what? play? How Let's, they yeah, play? I, I won't go into the MVP talk because we love you here in Colorado. We don't want any <laughs> civil war starting anytime soon. The way that they play, I would say Jokic. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Great. I guess I don't really need to say anything. No. <laughs> well, there you if, go. if there was a different way the question was phrased, there there are sure. a lot of things I yeah. like about Embiid. For sure. sure. I'm talking. Yeah, for sure. Like I'm. I, we like Embiid. We're yeah. not Embiid haters. Yeah. He's a there's player. A, there's a right. He's there's a real a player here for obvious reasons. In the I, I feel like he, he is a much more dominant big man to if you enjoy, you sure. know, a, a really good center in basketball right. to watch play. Yeah. He's got a. A lot of parts to his game, but I feel like he's got a little more like he's the muscle card to the sports. A guy. little more, yeah, 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 a little more muscle and and. Uh, tenacity maybe around the room totally no i feel that. I, i've been thinking about this question all day i'm like how am i going to like like that weave this very important question to kicking about basketball like all day. how did you feel so you went to georgetown and you're philly were you so mad when iverson came to the nuggets was that like the worst basketball day uh i don't know <laughs> to me no, i was like the best no, day I mean, of my basketball life was getting out an iverson nuggets uniform it was a, <laughs> it was definitely a bummer i think sure uh I felt like he was a little bit at the point in his career where was he kind of like scrambling, not scrambling for a team, but it was like a weird move. It was like, it was just okay, so out of the blue. Yeah, enough yeah, in the market yeah. to be like making it like yeah. changing a team or changing a franchise, sure. which is like, he came to be Melo's guy. Yeah. And yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's kind of the, the down, I guess, as the career kind of starts to sure. fizzle yeah. out and it uh, wasn't finals stepping over, for uh, sure. uh, what's his name and the Clippers coach for sure. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I always have the the George Shantai, which is so cool. Um, you know, such a well regarded alumni, which is really cool to love. Georgetown yeah. Hoops can't be mad at it. Well, you can now. They gave sure. up AI. <laughs> sure, that's all I care but yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got AI and Keegan. That's true. Let me clarify that. I don't think that's quite um, the same. But <laughs> hey, look, elite athletes. Keegan there's no lies. And then AI no lies <laughs> detected in terms of who went to Georgetown. Though. Um, <laughs> we don't compare. We just appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, 
So, uh, is are you Philly the rest of the way in terms of sports? Is it all Philly? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Birds, all them birds undefeated. Feeling yeah, good about that? Um, really exciting start. Yeah, it's been fun to watch. Uh, you know, I just uh, Hertz is a lot of fun to watch. I feel like he, you know, after the whole Wentz thing, kind of fizzled out, and and he was kind of out of That's there. That's a we very saw nice things, way of putting. That. We saw <laughs> we saw things come out about how that fizzled out and how the departure was, but it sounded like Hertz was. I read a quote somewhere that said like the adult in the room or the man in the room or something about being the mature one. And I think, you know, right. that says a lot. And, and yeah. I think you can see that in his leadership and the way he plays. Which totally. is really cool. How excited were you in that Super Bowl, by the way? Just real quick. I so, was like... very excited. But <laughs> <laughs> we were in preseason. We were down in Saint, yeah. um, Port Lauderdale with when I was at the Union. And so we couldn't even, like, we weren't even in Philly for the parade. Oh, so we missed that's everything. Sucks. So, like, yeah, what a game to you watch. Weren't, we're you with, couldn't like, some climb Florida the, fans the light posts in the... An Eagles bar or something. Yeah. So it was, like, a little bit of a... Uh, anticlimactic celebration but it was good you have the resident um jalen hurts guy here producing the show today love it. all in love it i'm a jalen hurts stan it's true <laughs> <laughs> well then we actually are uh, our boss ali monroy mm-hmm. uh from philadelphia big eagle yeah. fan as well okay. <laughs> ali cool. if you're listening we'll give you a go birds just for you um <laughs> uh but so let's get into i mean union obviously is is just cracked the top 100, according to 538's World Club Rankings, their first MLS team to do so. Mm. Um, I don't know how much stock you hold in that or if you even knew it existed. But, um, I mean, what have you seen from being a Philly guy and a soccer guy with that club and, and sort of what they've been able to do with this run of form they're on? Um, yeah, they've, uh, they, they've done a really good job. I think another team that, um, in terms of finding ways within the league to, to master the budget and master the – the types of players you sign and the way they fit together and the blend of MLS guys. And um, it's, it's been fun to watch. I mean, there's, there's a competitor side in you that once I left, like, ah, you know, you don't want them to do well, but at the same sure, time, yeah. like, they've done so, so well that it's like, well, yeah. how can you even like, you know, say anything? Right. And, yeah. uh, you know, and I still have some, some friends that I played with on the team and it's been um, really cool to see them succeed and, and do so well and, and turn into a team that like is talked about around the league as like, okay, well, you know, how do we prepare for, for this team? You know, and, and, um, they do so many things well that, uh, it, yeah, like I said, it's been impressive. They score yeah. a ton. They don't give up any. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of the way to go. Yeah, it's <laughs> up, in my opinion, that's the best academy in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. I, no disrespect to FC Dallas, a lot of great players too, but the union is regarded worldwide as well. And you came through that academy. What was kind of your experience coming through that academy? Yeah, it, um, you know, especially now too, to see how much it's grown and, and the youth facilities and, and the schooling that they offer, like the residency program and all of that has been awesome. Um, I didn't get to experience that because it was kind of in the work, in the workings of, of still being mm-hmm. developed. And, and even the academy when I trained and was with them, didn't officially join like the MLS academy system until the year I left for college. Okay. Um, and so the year before that, they had invited me to play during the high school season and kind of go away from the high school team. And, but that was, they weren't quite in like the MLS system yet. And so it was kind of, it's what ended up kind of, I think, making the homegrown tag murky and, and, and yeah. is why it didn't end up working out that way. But, um, but at the same time, uh, you know, a lot of guys that were in the academy then, like Jim, for instance, coached in the academy when I was coming through the mm-hmm. academy, or the guy that signed us in at academy trainings is now their like player liaison for, for like player well-being and 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 so to have guys that have been in the system and live in the area and and are Philly people, um, is also really cool and it gives yeah. the the organization some identity and for, it's, for it's sure cool. it helps out having that kind of homegrown connection actually absolutely, absolutely. So. well then let's kind of do, let's get back into into the rapids um, probably not the ideal end to the season if we're asking you you know where you want to end the season it'd be ho- hoisting a cup sure. um, injuries you know just kind of some weird games throughout the season. What do you like when you look back on it into the off season and, and kind of trying to, to, to pull something from this season, is it individual performances? Is it development of some of the young guys? Cause you know, you and some other guys last season really committed, extended, you know, are, are committed to, to building something here and Robin extended and Porg extended. So what do you pull out of a season that doesn't really end the way you want it from a team side? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's definitely a difficult, you know, concept and and question as you ask it. It's it's like you know, in general, our goal is to win MLS Cup, and, and mm-hmm. obviously a byproduct of that is is getting into the playoffs. And when seven teams from each conference make it, it's like, well, that that kind of felt, you know, disappointing to say the sure. least. And it's yeah. and it's like, okay, like you said, what can we take from it? And I think 
even even though that's the case, there's you know 34 games. There's you break it down into how many more like instances and just things that we can get better at. Like we saw stretches of play where we felt, and hopefully the fans felt that we were a really really good team, and we and took complete control of a game. Um, for very long stretches, if not you know full games at a time, against really good opponents, you know one that sticks out in my mind is is after the rescheduled Open Cup game in Minnesota, we come back and play an LAFC team that's LAFC, right? And, yeah, and yeah. it's the middle of the day, it's short rest, it's you know it's it's pretty hot in Colorado, and um you know and we show up and grind out like a two nothing, three nothing. Yeah. Uh, granted, I think we got a couple PKs and yeah. sh- maybe it almost should have had a third, but yeah. But it was the it was just the them, mentality, yeah. and it was just like. We've got a group here that can dig in and, and win in a really gritty way. Sure. And, and I think when you have that foundation, and, and that's what we found out about our team and the way Robin leads guys is, you know, we're going to dig in for them and we're going to we're gonna do the hard work. And it might, not, it might not look pretty on the day. You know, guys might not all click and, and, and fire on all cylinders together, but I think that's what we can take from it is we, we've got that, you know, we, and we've had that since he came. Yeah, and that LAFC game is re- really reminiscent of this SC Dallas game mm. where you guys just dominated the whole game. It wasn't, like, even close. Like, Yeah. And you, and you guys, like, short rest because rescheduled Open Cup because of weather, and you guys still came in and completely dominated. Yeah, and I think uh, – and that was what was encouraging about the first half of da- – well, I, I guess a lot of Dallas yesterday, but the first half especially, the way that from the, the first whistle it was like – we looked like the enforcers. We looked yes. like we had a lot yes. of the ball. We looked like we were dictating the tempo of the game, which f- a- a- in many instances this year has, has been missing. And I think the only other thing I'll say about it is we do so much better at home than we do away. And that yeah. was very clear this year. And, and I think that that's something that has to improve. Next year for sure. You know, this is a ultimately useless stat, but when I was up, I, you know, I, I'm up top with, with uh, our communications boys over there watching the game. And I don't think Yarbrough touched the ball until six minutes into the game or something. Like you guys were on the attack. Yeah. The whole yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. You know, hearing it, it's like, oh, six minutes. But at the same time, like. It's a lot of time. There, there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's probably quite a few times where <laughs> yeah. the ball could go end to end in, in those minutes. And um, yeah, it's a, another testament to how. Even a long pass by accident. that we're sure. Or like, just like a reset or anything. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You but didn't how, have to. How yeah. quickly we were able to just gra- grab the game. And I think we talk about that a lot. And, and it's difficult to start games well because it can just be two teams kind of filling each other out mm-hmm. and just kind of smashing stuff in behind and being really cagey. Um, sure. And I think it, it's, it, it showed a lot. Again, you know, at this point in the year, out of the playoffs, different group of guys on the field, and it still, you know, has that look to it, I think is encouraging. Totally. Yeah. We saw some really good performances from some of those guys that, that weren't necessarily regulars to start the season. We talked about it on our show, and I, we were talking to some of the guys about it um, at the Burgundy Affair over the weekend, but it was kind of Max's coming out party that, mm-hmm. for that game. Yeah, I think um, what's unfortunate about Max is I think we everybody inside has seen uh, all of the qualities that he's had for a longer time than people outside just because he, you know, I think he there was one other game where I felt like maybe it was more of his, mm-hmm. okay, and I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like it was a full perform, performance. Well, to be honest, yeah, I mean, Dallas could have been his best for sure. But um, but I also thought it was a little bit different role for him too. Like I, I felt like I played a lot of passes him in build outs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and that's a really actually we good noticed point. that too. And, yeah, yeah. and he, I feel like is a little bit more of a forward guy. But like again, position nuances. Like for for a guy that plays like maybe a forward eight or ten position to come back and feel more like a double six. six. Yeah, and like the the way he was able to turn out of stuff and get us out the other side was, I mean, it makes my job. Way super, super yeah. Easy. It's just like here, take this. <laughs> Especially because he just matter. grabbed the ball, turned around, and was trying to get it downfield instead yeah. of like trying to yeah. pass it for back, sure. look for the perfect play. For sure. I noticed that a lot with you guys. I mean, obviously, you have Mikey and you have Johnny, and you have guys that can kind of burn those those sidelines. Um, when you're playing out from the back, and I mean, Dallas might have been a little different playing from the center and playing in that three back, but do you? I guess just your preference in terms of playing style. Do you like pushing it? Long balls up to the top, or do you like building out possession with your sixes like that and kind of grinding out, working your way up, holding uh, possession? I think I'm a small ball guy first. I, sure. I love to see everyone on the field being super calm and just knocking it through somebody. I think that, right. for me, is is way more, I don't know, excited or, or way more like comprehensive football to be a player. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to, at the same time, like, you know, there's nothing like seeing a center back stand on a ball and just like pick out the perfect run in behind with, sure. with good timing. And yeah. it's still like it's almost it's almost more impressive because it's breaking down the same defense with with much less right 
you it's know, a little poetic. smoke and mirrors. Yeah. It's just like, look how easy this is for us. So, <laughs> so I think, you know, they're, they're different, but I, I would probably stick with the, yeah, the small ball for sure. Um, so I, we didn't really talk to anyone after the game, but that CONCACAF game, was that the coldest game you've ever played to start the season? Uh, I think it was, I think technically the coldest, I don't know if it was cold or not, but the that first game, game of, of 19 against Portland at home. Yeah. Yeah. Was like the coldest MLS game ever, but I think the Comunicaciones game was felt colder. I think it was the wind and the snow. Yeah, yeah it was, it was, I think it, just, it was windier. What do you, I mean, how do you prepare for that? You don't? You right? Like, what do you do? You are like Rocky. And you just <laughs> kick a ball around for like half an hour. And Actually, you're like, that's oh, pretty good that yeah, you're a so Philly good. guy, that's man. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Just smacking the ball. massive piece of the meat <laughs> in the locker. How is it going to help you with football? No idea, but yeah. it's preparing me for sure. <laughs> Honestly, it, I mean, I've played in some cold weather before. You sure. know, I, I trained as a kid, even in, in some snowy, icy conditions. But yeah, yeah, there's not much. I mean, you you just you <laughs> kind of you, you're having a little bit of a, of a talk with yourself, kind of the whole time, keeping yourself in it, and like you know, telling yourself you're not cold or, or right. just like <laughs> moving your hands quite often and, and kind of yeah. keep your fingers there. But yeah, it's tough. The feet are the toughest because obviously they go numb. It's, it's <laughs> relatively difficult. What, how do you come out at halftime after that? Like you know what warmth is those 15 minutes at halftime and then you have to come out and then you're just like this is not what it's i find yeah, out it's, for. <laughs> it's hard for sure because you almost yeah like you said get a little taste of like oh maybe i do have some feeling in yeah. some of these like extremities but um you're, you're kind of just in a state of, like not shock but the adrenaline's gone as well and you're kind of that's you know you're kind of locked yeah. in it's that's definitely why you're an elite athlete and I'm on the couch <laughs> watching you play an elite, as an elite athlete because I couldn't do it. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. even go to the game because it was so cold. That was yeah, cold. yeah. That you was are cold. an elite producer, my guy. But don't, not an don't, elite athlete. I don't, I don't have to do that in the cold. I'm sweating That's right true. now, man, in front That's of the true. lights. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is out there doing it in like negative 10 degree weather. Like, <laughs> All right, we got a question we're going to get to from one of our co-hosts. But first, before we get to that, we got to talk about the homies at Avaca TV. Uh, Avaca is the new goat in Colorado sports. That is the greatest of all television. Avaca TV delivers amped up sports coverage for Colorado fans featuring altitude sports. Get your rapids. Get it. You have one more game to watch this season on altitude. Listen to the guys. Listen to cello. Listen to Fleming. Um, it's also better than whatever altitude said. Just saying. I, I love Avaca. It has altitude. Yeah. It's amazing. Um you get the most regional content for the lowest price for sports in Colorado. You get DU, CSU, UNC, Metro State. You get the Rockies. You get the Rapids. You get the Nuggets. You, get you the also get Air Force now. You get Air Force. You get everybody. Why aren't you watching on Avaca TV? You can also watch us on Avaca TV. You can watch the DNVR channel, which is pretty tight. You are on TV um, right now, Keegan. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. I need to check uh, my- it's all in crystal clear HD while using less bandwidth than you enjoy over 60 entertainment channels, including news, movies, and more. Turn your home into the ultimate game viewing zone. You can even stream your teams from your phone, laptop, or tablet when you're on the go. You can also add on a discounted Sling TV bundle to get ESPN and more. Ivaca is only $25 a month plus a $5 receiver fee right now. Go to ivaca.tv slash DNVR. All DNVR listeners get $10 off per month for the first three months. You're only paying $15 a month for TV? That's that's unreal. For all the sports you get? Come on, what are you doing? Do it. That's evoca.tv slash DNVR. You watch your favorite Colorado sports teams. No contracts. No catches. Ivaca is TV made for champions of the remote. Okay, digging in, our guy, downtown Dwayne Brown. He's the guy that makes all those match uh, match day graphics that we put out. I don't know if you've seen those. Oh, cool. He's our co-host. He um he has a question here. He says, thanks for being on the show. We're all big fans. What traditions or things unique to this group of Rapids players make the Rapids a unique experience for a player? Traditions or unique things? Um... Man, he really puts you on the spot yeah. on this one. You can just play altitude. <laughs> like, we play at altitude. <laughs> you know, one thing that I noticed with you guys, and, and granted, I don't, I'm not as connected to other MLS teams at large, but your guys' involvement with your um, select team with the, the Special Olympics team, I think, mm, is something yeah. that, the unified. You know, especially the unified team, sorry, not select. Um, but seeing that and seeing the support from the senior team to those guys has been something really special that we've noticed. Yeah, it's um, the the team and the organization does such a good job. Uh, they've been on a couple away trips with us, mm-hmm. and they do our you know like day of the game activation walk, and we all like walk together. It's cool. you know maybe half a mile or a couple blocks or something, but just to be able to kind of mingle with them and and hear what they're thinking on the game day because for them they sure. they're like they're experiencing a, a you know a plane ride like an away trip you know and they're doing everything that we do which um, which is cool to see you know like talking to them on the walk and hearing how nervous they were and yeah, like yeah. you know playing on a you know big field and just like the lights and um 
it, it's just it's cool to see like the same you know joy in their eyes that that we talk about even still as professional athletes playing for a long time that we still get you know for those reasons mm-hmm. um and you know and just how social they are like you know they, they love to come up to us and and ask us you know some sure. some really bold questions and, <laughs> and, it's, and it, like i said it's just fun to interact and um we've gotten to know you know kind of a group of them now that have been around for a couple of years and um and yeah it was uh you know we do have a couple of guys i think clinton diego stick out in my head um to kind of lead the charge and and kind of being the 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 people that connect us uh, both groups and stuff and they've done an awesome job as well so um that's definitely a cool thing. I kind of tried to think a little bit more about the the traditions. We play this game uh, every day before the game at the end of training called crossing and finishing. It's just some mm-hmm. small little game, but it, I feel like it's when everyone's personality comes out just sure. because it's not really when training's happening. It's more just some silly Kicking game. Around. Silly, yeah, what, silly what's game the game? Where, so a guy, your partner starts in the middle, uh, like top of the 18, 25 yards out, and has to hit a left-footed ball out to the right flank. And okay. it's got to stay outside the 18, inside the, uh, the touch line. And your partner has to bring it in right foot, and cross it right foot without it stopping, and you have to score out of the air. Okay. Oh, then okay. Then if you make it, you switch. You have to do the exact same thing. If you make it again, you go to the other side. So it's got to be a right-footed ball out, left-footed, left-footed oh, touch, okay. yeah. left-footed service, out of the air ball can't stop. Got it. Um, and it's actually very rare that a, part, us, a partnership wins. It's usually sure. the goalkeepers just – Okay. Being goalkeepers. And have you won <laughs> this season? It's all telling you you're uh, not getting anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I don't – Maybe once, actually. I think, Who's I think your partner we, usually? Uh, recently, it's Sam Nicholson. Okay. Um, okay. There's some sauce between the two of you And I don't there. know that we've won together. I think my only win was... It's hard to say. I might not be able to remember. But that's a cool little thing that we do. And that's we a have fun He won by himself. He did it all by himself. <laughs> he won the tag team by himself. <laughs> um, a cool game. Sure. It's a lot of fun. You know, after, after the game, the Dallas game... Um, you know, because we know a lot of the guys over at C38. And watching you guys all go over there and watching their... Um, relationship with Drew kind of show, mm. you know, cause he's obviously been here the longest, but um, you know, what have you, you know, what has it been, if any, any of your relationship with C38 and sort of the, the, the dedicated fan groups here in Colorado? Um, it's been, it's been really cool. Uh, there, there's definitely a tight knit group that is all about us. And I think, you know, as players, that's, that's all that we care about. And that's what right. gets us excited as people that, are there through thick and thin are, are all about you guys no matter what. And, you know, are going to be there in snow games and freezing cold games and waiting out weather delays are still there. So, you know, little things like that uh, from a on field perspective has been incredible. Uh, and then even just other little things like, uh, you know, after I won man of the match, I think it was against San Jose. Uh, there's a little like post game appearance that you get to interact with certain season ticket holders or, or <laughs> C38 members. I'm not exactly sure, but, but even that, um, again, people that are so bought into the, to the club, to the team have been supporting it for years to hear little different stories when you're shaking hands and taking sure. pictures yeah. and, and signing autographs. Um, it's so cool. And, and that's, that's what makes a club, you know, feel like a family kind of, yeah, if you have yeah. an identity I talked about earlier mm-hmm. and, and, uh, you know, that's been, that's been awesome to feel at, at a second team now and, yeah. you know, not, not my hometown team type of a thing, which is You're, cool. We were just talking about this downstairs, me and, um, Mitch, you definitely represent what the Rapids are in our opinion. Mm. You are Mr. Rapid. Thank you. I appreciate we, that. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we do this with all the, the all our beats do that. We have a Mr. Nugget. We got a Mr. Mr. Bronco. So how's it feel? You just found this out live and in person. How's it feel, Mr. Rapid? What a surprise. Uh, I mean, in all seriousness, I, like I said, you know, a lot of people talk about like durability and availability and how I play, you know, so many minutes and so many games in a row. And, and it just is, it's, it, it always takes me thinking it's still this, like the team's decision to put me on the field. Like I, yeah, pride myself in being healthy, you know, mm-hmm. knock on wood and, and available and, and training well and all this, this and that, but there's I'll still decisions for you. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still <laughs> decisions that are made that like <laughs> we just prefer this guy, you know. Right. And and you know guys fall out of favor all the time. So, um, thank you guys. For sure. That. But yeah. but also you know just so <laughs> thankful to, to to have that you know belief and and trust and stuff. For this I stuff. think talking about like we were talking about this downstairs. Who's Mr. Rapid? Who represents the team the most? One thing that came to my head immediately was uh, your barber skills. So you oh, give wow. haircuts. You're the haircut guy in the locker room? Yeah. yeah he You're nice with it? Haircuts. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's been like, I was telling somebody the other day, I think it's been like 10 years since I yeah. started cutting hair. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a cool way, again, to 
to be a part of the team and, and just kind of like interact in a different way. You yeah. know, you get a, a little bit different conversation in the barber chair versus I was about on to the say, field, you know what I mean? Do so, you get a little bit of the tea when you're talking <laughs> to them? Or do you get a little yeah, bit more about their personal life? Of like, course, you learn a little, uh, you know, a little something new every haircut. But, um, yeah, it's it's – it's been fun. My I cannot afford a psychologist. I just go to my barber shop very go. often and way cheaper. It's yeah, way, way cheaper better. Yeah. And I come out looking Some people use better. a bartender. Some people use a barber. So actually, Dwayne asked. This is perfect timing. Actually, Dwayne uh, asked if anyone else on the team has any non soccer trade skills. You're the barber. Does anyone else have anything unique that we don't wouldn't know about? Um, or is there any other barbers on the team? Is it just you? They have competition so. in the locker room. So. Not that I know of. I don't think. But uh, <laughs> hmm. That's another tough one. He's, he's throwing real tough, Dwayne, man. tough questions. Dwayne, man. Come on, dude. That. Softballs. We're not going to ask you an easy one. What's your favorite color that starts with a B? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's burgundy or blue. You got uh, two oh, options. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? I was going to say, uh, blue came to mind first. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, he's, he's going burgundy. to burgundy. Georgetown, yeah. though, right? Blue, yeah, Rapids, blue. Yeah, there we go. Two Philly had some blue. I get it. I get it. You could also say bronco um, orange, and I, I would have accepted that completely. You know, you pride. You said you pride yourself on, and I have to to own up to something here you said you pride yourself on availability and being healthy and playing all the time mm. i interviewed you after practice one day and i was like now that yarby went out this was after portland when yarby got the concussion and couldn't couldn't go and i said what's it like being the iron man left on the team and then that game you didn't start so that's my fault and i apologize <laughs> I, I have to own up to it right i don't now. think it's your yeah, fault yeah. i'm pretty sure i probably no i jinxed it i, I jinxed it you, dude i jinxed it i'm nah, sorry nah, don't Frazier don't saw him it. talking <laughs> to you he's like, he was like all right let's get this guy out he's here. out of the starting room get him, him out of here yeah. i had to own up to it it's been weighing on me this whole this whole summer i can kind didn't of tell because yeah you waited until keegan was in here to be like you know what guys it's my fault i'm sorry i'm sorry but you you've done that before like you have like you you are the guy that is game in game out do you feel you have anything special in your routine or your training schedule or like your home life? Are you doing, are you on the Peloton at night or drinking athletic greens or, you know, whatever it is that's like something little special that you do to, to uh, be that guy? Not to my knowledge. I think, uh, you know, again, I'm just super thankful. I've got such great genetics, I guess, because <laughs> sure. the, the way that I'm able to, to recover, but get through, get through games. And, and, you know, we, we get a data report sent to us from the GPS stuff and, and looking at numbers like that, you know, the way that, that, uh, you know, sports performance guys in organizations kind of look at performance patterns, data patterns, and, and then kind of know when to rest guys and see mm -hmm. little dips in, in, um, data output. And, and again, for, for the most part throughout the year, I can kind of maintain a certain level of output and, and still recover relatively well. I, I do think one of the biggest things for me is, and it kind of started in college, I felt the most fit and healthy when I was strong. And we did, and, and I think American soccer in general, especially in college, gets a, a bad rep for the amount of strength training, weightlifting, gym work that they do. And I think it, it rubs a lot of players the wrong way. Some guys just, you know, Honestly, a lot of players don't like to lift heavy. They feel sore, and then and then they don't feel comfortable on the field. Sure. And I, I, it doesn't have to be that way. I just think, for me personally, it's always, it's just kind of made me feel sturdy. And, sure. Uh, and I, and I, and I think I put a lot of a lot of um, value in that. Sure. I mean, you're not the biggest guy on the back line, no, right? You're, no, no. I mean, you put Gus next to you. He's <laughs> yeah. he's he's a statue. Yeah. That, right. Yeah. So you probably do want to add that little bit of extra, you know, thickness and and strength. You got to sure. make them think twice about going up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they think twice like they do me for Gus, but it is crazy completely Gus out human. there, man. He is huge. He's a large We guy. met him at the Burgundy Affair and we're like, this dude can play point guard. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad shot. Yeah. 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 You looked the part. Yeah, I was like, this dude can. I don't know, though. We got to put a basketball in his hand. That could be pretty funny. Uh, yeah. Yappy to me is the same way. Yappy has an NBA point guard. Yeah. Look, yeah, too. but I've seen him with the Nerf ball in, no. in the locker room. No, go. shot is absolute trash. <laughs> Good thing he's a striker. Yeah, good thing. He only plays yeah, his feet. We'll keep the strike on his feet. I yeah. hope he hears that, too, because he will not be happy. His locker is right at the basketball, and he spent uh -huh. a lot of time over there. Wow. It hasn't gotten better. It right, well, <laughs> hasn't gotten better. That's even well, worse. Darren, you have something to work on this offseason. Uh, do you – have you thought about offseason plans? Do you, are you, you, do you have any place you like to go? Are you a golfer? Are you, do you just go back to Philly and hang? What, what do you kind of have, like, a, a go-to offseason season? kind of reset vacation not really no it's always been a little bit different um you know my wife and i our families are back 
on the East Coast, and that's kind of been probably one of the more difficult things since moving out here is just trying to balance that and, and uh, you know, split the holidays, get the holidays right, and, and our only time to travel is really in those winter holiday months. And um, we've got a couple weddings this off offseason, uh, but it's, you know, it's it every single off season has been different for me. There's been, um, you know, last off season I think we had five weeks total. This off season I don't know exactly how many weeks, but it's significantly longer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think you know I'm at the point now where um, my body definitely needs a little bit of time where it's just like not not like anything at all. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and it's it's usually relatively short, maybe a couple of weeks, whatever it is, you know, to start off. And then even still, I'll probably spend a little more time away from the actual ball. And, and do more, you know, cardio and strength, and but even more so still strength, and then kind of wait to cardio load and, and that type of um, joint impact probably mm-hmm. later on in the offseason kind of to gear up for the – because I, I think that's – by the end of guys' careers, like, I feel that it's the strength, mobility, and and then the, like, joint pain. And, and yeah. I think that comes a lot from strength and mobility. And, I th- and uh, you know, Drew is somebody to look at that we talked about before who's done it you know, better than anyone in terms of staying healthy and doing it for a long period of time and doing it at a high level. Um, I mean, the, the guy's fit, you know, he, he, uh, he, but he also looks after himself and isn't like, you know, just pounding away and, and running miles on concrete through right. the entire off season. Yeah, so, for sure. you know, it's a balance. It's, you know, sure. I haven't figured out a perfect answer, but I like to think that just m- managing the rest and the, and the workload. And you get a lot of advice from Drew, like in your conditioning or even maybe like personal life and stuff like that. Just because um, I feel like you guys have kind of similar careers, in my opinion. Yeah, he uh, he he was someone I looked up to even before we kind of teamed up, and um, I mean he's a legend. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's one of those guys you look at and it's like the guy just does everything right. Yeah. He's always in the right place, and and that just uh, I don't mean that just on the field. It's like he's always early. He's always at the right place mm-hmm. for like a team meeting or like at the airport. Like he's he's just there, and he, and mm-hmm. and because of that, he's he's just a natural leader, and and that's something that I like to think that I can do and have done as well as lead by example. You know, I'm not always vocal and screaming at guys and kind of, you know, trying to encourage guys. It's more just I'm working my ass off and, and I hope that that inspires you to do the same and, and that we can all work together like that. So, um, but Drew's also a big golfer. We play a lot of golf together and to be able to spend time with him in that way and kind of pick his brain about stuff. Oh, dude, really yeah, that it's sounds awesome. awesome. Yeah. What's, uh, where, where do you guys play? Uh, we've probably played over like, 25 courses in the past couple of years yeah. uh, nice. just any anything and, and everything uh you know I, I personally love to see different places and sure. just the way they set things up and the different challenges of the course and sure um we had a we've had a few dmvr tournaments this summer we've played city park have you played okay. city park yet uh yeah I played dude that, that is a fun tight little course yeah it's uh, uh it killer views shots, too. for sure yeah yeah, yeah. Cool place. Um, I don't play golf. Don't look at me, man. <laughs> I'm a golfer. I, I'm yeah, not the me. golfer here. There's I'm the no golfer. Reason yeah. I'm just like yappy, man. Don't put anything in my hands. <laughs> so Let me when do everything with my feet. When you get your vacation mode in, are you a tropical guy? Do you go like you want to go to like New York City or something like that? Europe, like tradition, history kind of thing. Uh, what's your What's your preferred off season vacation mode? I would probably lean tropical. I don't yeah. know why that always just seems like vacation more in my mind. Hit a beach, uh, yeah. But my wife's way more hiking, mountain town, or like you know, mountain cabin, sure. or explore the woods type of type of Aspen, which is Alps, the right place to be. Yeah, for yeah. Her. So you know, we've gotten really lucky with places to, to see in that way. And too. it works having your off season be in the winter there. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. But it also works because you get to go to Cancun and all these places where the algae is not all the <laughs> not there the whole time. <laughs> so nice, nice. Well. um... Keegan, I mean, first off, thank you so much for coming in, man. Absolutely. We really, uh, really appreciate it. Um, do you want to get your speech off that you had prepared real quick for Defender of the Year? Oh, no, it was only what I said. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, like that the was only it? thing okay, that okay. I wanted to mention was that I put a lot of value yeah. in like either the coach or players. Yeah, sure. talking points right. ready to that go. Was it. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. One quick question. What a speech. Just, yeah. I have a quick question. What did you like more, your block in FC Dallas or your goal? The goal you like the screamer you had, or did you, or was the block more important to you? Dude, that, that block was oh, epic. Oh, the goal line. Yeah, one? yeah. The goal. Which wait? What do you mean? You Just know, your last yeah, rocket. Goal. Dallas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one do you prefer? Uh, the uh, rocket um, goal. Which to you meant more, the goal line save or the goal? That's, it's different. I mean, I think, like, gut reaction is the goal. Like, it's sure. way, way more celebrated of a moment, obviously. Yeah. But at the same time, like for my role in that game to be kind of the middle guy and, and come up with a play like that and, and to feel like me and Will kind of did it together. Yeah. Because Will in D.C. had my back when I gave up the PK and he yeah. saved one. So it was like something like that is also like 
you know, hell yeah. Yeah, so. it, that's why I was like, well, I used to play defense a lot. Like, yeah. when you blocked it, it was yeah. a little bit cooler than For when sure. you made it because it's, sure. like, it's like I stopped you. Yeah. That's you didn't a tough, stop me. man. Yeah. I think we called you Keeper Keegan on the uh, game third we had gone. So, yeah, maybe nice maybe you can be the third the third guy. Right? Throw I'll the gloves on? It, yeah. Well, we have Omar and Emilio here. We'll have you Photoshop into that. <laughs> Keep a roll immediately. <laughs> um, you got any World Cup predictions? Um, I don't really off the top sure. of my head, but I'm, uh, I'm excited to watch. Um, you know, we've obviously missed, missed yeah. one, you know, the last cycle. So I'm excited to watch and, and see what the team brings and, um, and hopefully have some guys from our league, you know, yeah. Well, wow. Do you have any connections with Pulisic, another Pennsylvania kid? Ever played against him? Any? Oh, great question. Dude. Uh, no real connections. I trained. So this would have been the summer of 2016. It was my rookie year, and they played in the Eagle Stadium for what well, that would have been like Copa America or something, or like Gold Cup or something like sure. that. Um, and they trained at our facility like the day after the game or something. And Pulisic didn't feature, so it was a day for them to maybe get their minutes. Um, and I played for the U.S. team with Pulisic, Pulisic in front of me. Okay. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, it was a been, moment for me. Like, yeah, I was yeah. a rookie and had, like, a really good start to the year. Uh-huh. And then they told me, like, as training started that I'd be playing with them. And I was like, <laughs> by the way. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> by the and, way, you're uh, practicing with our national team right now. <laughs> and um, man, that was the first time I really met him, interacted with him at all. Sure. Um, awesome. Which was cool. But that was it. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. All right. Well, guys, make sure you like and subscribe to DMVR Sports. Follow us on Twitter. Follow Yaya on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Follow Keegan on Twitter. He's a great follow. Yeah, great follow. <laughs> uh, he'll always throw up the game day graphics and and all that. Um, and uh, you know, thank you for joining in. We'll uh, we'll see you post game Sunday decision day. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. The most important thing. Do you know? Have you ever seen the end of the show? We say the same thing every time. Mm-mm. Yaya, do you want to do it this time? No, this is your thing. <laughs> it's my thing. It's your thing. All right, guys. More important than anything. Up the pids.